want to address this comment from my viral video with over a million views on age gaps with older women and younger men. So what I was trying to say, which might not have come across, so let's clarify, three years and under is the same age. It's not significant. So what I was trying to say is that over that, usually at least five years is considered a significant age gap. But I'm also thinking way more than that. And some of the people that left comments were talking about 15, 20 year age gaps. So I'm talking about significant age gaps. And also keep in mind that the older you are, the less significant any age gaps are. So if you're like 50 years old or over, an age gap is really not as relevant. So I'm talking about people within like 20 to 55 years old, right? Age gaps within that range. So the thing that I'm noticing though is that people are generally accepting of a woman being older and the man being much younger. Whereas if the man is older, people are much more triggered by him having a younger girlfriend or wife or whatever. And I find that strange because I think that it's actually more natural for the old, the man to be older than the woman. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Biology is definitely one of them, but there are other reasons as well. Let's look at some of them. So an older woman or an older man, anyone who's in the older position, right? Usually there's a difference between you know, someone that you, you fall in love with, who you're compatible with, who, you know, is healthy for you. You bring the, bre the best out in each other and you vet them for compatibility. So you have the shared values, you have shared life goals and relationship goals, and you have a shared lifestyle, then that's okay. You know, that happened and you did your due diligence to make sure this is the right person for you. Absolutely. I'm all for that regardless of as long as you're an adult and not a minor, but I'm, I'm all for that. Right. But the difference is when someone, I would like to call them unhealthy, seeks out someone younger based on avoidant attachment. Basically they've got some baggage from previous relationships or previous dating experiences, and they end up seeking out these younger people because they're looking for validation. So they're looking for pleasure and they're looking for control in a way, either explicitly or implicitly. So they're looking to avoid vulnerability. And because they're picking someone younger, they feel less vulnerable, less dependent, less at risk, right? And so that younger person has less baggage, um, feels less threatening to them, and usually is more fun, right? That's the general trend. And there's nothing wrong with having fun and enjoying someone's company, but you need more in order to have like a forever relationship or marriage and making sure that as the older person, especially, and this goes for women, even though the man, you know, you want to think that the man has his wits about him, men get caught up in a lot of their emotions. So it's especially true for younger men too. You can have all the chemistry in the world and the passion and the connection and have great time together but make sure that you're compatible and you want the same things and capable of meeting each other's needs. That's what's really important here. So you have to talk about it. Now it's okay if you decide, you know, I realize I'm sacrificing X, Y, Z, whether you have to maybe look at adopting or maybe you've sacrificed having children altogether. Maybe you don't want children. Maybe, you know, that's not important to you. Great. Then you're going into the relationship or the marriage with your eyes wide open. I don't see anything wrong with that. The problem is a lot of people get caught up in these relationships based on only feelings, thinking, well, it's love and that's the most important thing, but it's not. Like, yes, of course it is important, but without the other factors, it can be quite dysfunctional because you need to have compatibility and you need to be on the same page so that you don't end up in a dysfunctional relationship and you don't end up regretful when, you know, later down the road, you wish you had made different choices. You just didn't really realize it at the time. You didn't talk about it. You didn't think about it. You were just caught up in your impulsive behavior. So being able to be more mature and confront the reality of the situation and determine what is important to you, what you value, and making sure that you are honoring that. That's what I'm trying to say 
in this video. And well, also I was talking about the dynamic that can be dysfunctional between younger men and older women. Of course there are exceptions, but like I've said before in the comments, and I want to say it again, only 1% of marriages in, I think it's North America, but maybe it's just America. I'll try to post this re reference in the comments if I can find it, but only 1% of marriages are with older women and younger men because it generally doesn't work long-term. Of course, there are going to be exceptions, but generally it's a short-term thing. Like when men are at their sexual prime and women are at their sexual prime, that's when they are the most drawn to each other. But that is a short term thing for women. That sexual like arousal peak only happens for like a couple of years, generally. Of course, people have different personalities and experiences. So the incompatibility starts to be emphasized when that subsides and you're left with the situation where you realize you're very disconnected from the person or you realize there's a lot of other things that aren't working in the relationship or you're not able to meet each other's needs, whether intellectually or spiritually or in your family goals. And so when a man kind of wakes up to the fact that he's sacrificed potentially having biological children with a woman, you know, infatuation has worn off with, that's a rude awakening. And so instead of just sort of jumping into it and getting married first before you think about these things, assuming, oh, as long as we love each other, it'll be fine. No, you need to address these first, confront them eyes wide open and make sure you're willfully choosing to sacrifice certain things to be together forever. And as long as you do that, great. I think that is healthy. So I hope that cleared that up.